Hello comrade, here it is the leader of the Nazbol gang and the first son of Nazbol here to present a movie review for your consumption. Today I will review the film Downsizing. This film is a science fiction film created in the United States of America. This film is coming out in the year 2017 in the Christmas season and it is the most liberal in modern film you can imagine. The ideas presented in the film are pure bourgeois liberalism which exists in the United States of America. It has no conception of how the world really works. So we shall begin before we get into any kind of uh, ideology. Uh, background to this film, we should describe the plot. So, this film stars Matt Damon, and uh, he is a gloser, basically, and uh, he is a occupational therapist, and he shrinks down to the size of about uh, maybe two quarters stacked on top of each other over the course of the film. The idea of people shrinking down, why well, obviously never explained scientifically because of its absurdity, uh, is presented for op overpopulation. That this is a solution to overpopulation and can overconsumption of resources and the global warming. Yes, global warming is integral to this plot. Is more important, though, is the understanding of what global warming represents within their worldview. Okay. So, continue on. Matt Damon shrinks down to two quarters in height. To quarters standing like that. So he's like, uh, I don't know, maybe this, I believe this tall about in the film. Um, so he shrinks to that size. And his wife is supposed to shrink with him. And she does not. She divorces him. And actually, I deeply applaud this movie. The wife divorces him and takes everything he owns. <laughs> yes. The wife divorces him and takes everything he owns. Um, it is true that feminism is a low-hanging fruit and the abuse of men is a low-hanging fruit. But even to see that in a modern Hollywood movie is actually kind of amazing to me. Uh, that is the one thing I will applaud, and it is the one thing outside of generic liberalism that the film does right. Show a man destroyed by the betrayal of his wife economically. Now, <clears throat> we shall continue. The concept is, because of shrinking down to this height, you will gain a lot of material wealth, because your consumption of material wealth will be much lessened by your size. So you'll live in a luxurious home because of its cheapness to build by the materials. And you'll be able to consume food for nothing. Uh, any kind of media for nothing, right? And generally you're able to consume any resources you want because of your immensely shrunk size. But if you... Uh, this doesn't make any sense because human beings would still need the same nourishment if you densify the atom to shrink them, but uh, if not grossly more, um, regardless. So he uses his, loses his uh, renewal for his license in the new state that he moves in to do it. So he ends up becoming a poor man in an apartment. He meets uh, Germans who run a uh, business, Udo Kier, and the, the fucking... Uh, Twin Tarantino's uh, token German actor, and they run a business of taking high quality goods and putting them into small people sizes for exorbitant profits. Um, again, playing off the shrinking of resources. And um, he meets a woman, a Vietnamese woman played by Han Chao, Hong Chao who is a Vietnamese refugee, and we will talk deeply about this. And eventually, uh, they romantically fall in love, even though that their initial relationship is abusive. She herself was a refugee 
from Vietnam to the United States who was shrunk down against her will is a management. Now, this movie is a very, 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 very bad science fiction film. In the sense, it has no imagination for its world and what it would create and the repercussions of this science. If you look at any good science fiction film, and so people always say uh, anything about time travel is confusing because it explores the repercussions of time travel. My favorite time travel film of all times is Twelve Monkeys because Twelve Monkeys presents a closed loop of time travel. Its universe exists within a closed loop to where everything that the character does, even though they feel to be uh, influencing events in the past, within the present, yes, I know, time travel makes you gay and it's confusing and all that, supposedly, they're in fact playing through events that are predetermined, essentially, because <clears throat> they already occurred in the original past of the film. So, Bruce Willis sees himself die as a child, that he was always going to die because it is a closed loop, that the time travel always occurred, so it is deeply, it makes a lot of sense. The science fiction of the film is based around the repercussions of the science within it. There's just one example. Or, um, here's a very simple example, again with time travel. So in Back to the Future, Marty McFly and then um, Biff uh, steal the sports almanac to bet on the winnings that are already predetermined. So if time travel existed, you could do this. Okay, or um, the movie Fido, it has zombies in it to where these zombies are trained and they work as servants. The entire plot of this downsizing film is set within the presumptions of modern liberal America and it does not try to change anything within the film to pres the shrinking doesn't change people in any real meaningful way the only intelligent thing you could really say um, and it would be very very simple is that the Vietnamese woman is shrunken down against her will because uh, you lose all your power to be shrunken down. Obviously, you'd be completely dependent upon normal society if you were this size because you could be very easily killed and they could not man any weapons to defend themselves. So what you would imagine first is not only prisoners being shrunk down, but any bodies, you know, <laughs> what's more efficient, right? If the Holocaust really happened, what's more efficient? Think about it. Putting people and spending immense amounts of energy burning them up in ovens to see their bodies disappear, or shrinking them to that size and just burying them in the one uh, septic tank, right? So body disposal would be very easy. That isn't explored, right? Um, very, very simple exploration. But to get back to the point of this Marxist review is uh, the Marxist understanding of the labor theory of value. If you had unlimited resources, then all value would essentially revert to surplus value. Any value of any, any um, consumable good would essentially be defined by its surplus labor value alone. Yet, the film depicts manual laborers is, in, is deeply indebted. Anyone who, all society that would be left at that point would simply be the manual laborer because of the immense shrunkage of resources. In the West, part of the reason or the justification for <clears throat> the influx of immigrants is because they provide cheap labor. In the West, in its more advanced economic state, labor becomes more valuable because of its scarcity. But if you go into a <clears throat> third world country, you will see maids waiting on middle class people. You will never see this 
in, in middle class people in the first world because their labor is so much less valuable in the third world. So the existence of these Mexicans, so this Vietnamese refugee lady lives <clears throat> in a commune. All the people that do the manual labor for the city live in outside of the city unprotected because these people would completely be dependent on society and need to be protected. They live and are exploited by the evil rich white people. Well, this doesn't make any sense if you had any understanding of a labor theory of value. Their labor would vastly increase in value. The reason, for instance, a porcelain doll is so expensive is because the craftsmanship it takes to build that doll. A wooden dollhouse is extremely expensive compared comparatively to its resources because of the immense craftsmanship it takes to make that house. So the people working manual labor, regardless if it was carving out a house from a block for people to live in, a dollhouse, or if it was simply vacuuming, would gain immensely in this society. This society would be a deeply socialistic society because the workers would completely dominate capital. Yet the liberals who made this movie do not understand that. And furthermore, they do not make class distinctions based on economics. Their class distinctions are solely racial. <clears throat> this gets into the liberal concept as the other dark non-whites as pets. <clears throat> Blacks and Mexicans and Southeast Asians, maybe not Northeast Asians, but maybe less in this film, are essentially pets to be coddled and to justify your morality, to provide a morality in the absence of religion. <clears throat> because they can never achieve equally due to their lower <clears throat> their lower IQ and their ability to work on the same level so that they'll shrink providing an infinite <clears throat> advancement for them they can never advance to the equality so they're this infinite cut sore which can never be healed within the society so it becomes a religious virtue to help these pets, these stupid animals to these liberals. They do not view the black, poor person, underclass, um, lumpen proletariat as a person who has value. They view them as a commodity to justify their, their morality in the absence of religion. So... <clears throat> Another thing that's important to think about this film, and we'll get to maybe the most, another very important part. I thought, because you know, I'm, I'm a fucking Nazbol, that talking about uh, labor theory of value, that was really the thing that really got into my head, is that liberals do not understand theory of value and, and uh, class consciousness. Their so-called leftism is completely devolved of that. And it is essentially the basis of class does not exist, class is race, and other races are our pets to be coddled and to justify our own ethics and morality, to give a, to virtue signal and to be the virtuous person. Now we'll get into the Vietnamese woman herself. Um, she lives amongst Mexicans, and she's depicted to be a devout Christian. But her faith is completely emotional. It depicts faith as something that is absolutely emotional. And furthermore, <clears throat> the faith that she has is a Pentecostal faith. But she lives amongst these Mexicans. Not saying that Pentecostalism is growing amongst the third world to our great detriment, it is. Yet, Vietnamese refugees and Mexicans are belonging to a certain religious faith. A religious faith which is a little bit more threatening and a lot less emotional than Pentecostalism. The religion depicted in, the, in uh, liberalism is something for the pets. 